Today's color code is SW7064. Let's get cracking. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com and welcome back to Color Code, where we crack the code on color selection. Every single paint color out there has at least one corresponding color code, which helps identify it. And today's color code of SW7064 is a Sherwin-Williams color called Passive. If you have any interest on painting and decorating or getting some fairly professional color advice, then go ahead and subscribe and click on all notifications so you don't miss out on the many videos we post every single week. If you're new to this series, this is going to be an overview on the color Passive. We'll talk about its undertones, its LRV or light reflectance value, which essentially determines how much light it reflects and therefore how light or dark it is. But the main goal here is to teach you how to use it, where to use it and what to use it with. And for all my Benjamin Moore fans watching, later on I'll tell you which Benjamin Moore color is closest to this one. So Passive is a color name that doesn't really tell you a ton about what it is, but when you see it, you get it. What we have here is a light mid-tone gray that is slightly complex on how it's composed. It has an LRV of 60, which sort of gives you a hint about how much colorant is inside. And that opens up the opportunity for some complexity. As a general blanket statement, grays as paint colors tend to lean either cool or warm. While some grays can sometimes have a green cast, others can appear almost purple in a way. And then you have the gray beige or grayish category of colors that start to look even less gray. So where does that put passive? Well, to be honest, the answer isn't all that simple here. Passive is largely dependent on its lighting. I'd say more so than a lot of the other grays we've already spoken about on this channel. Give passive a ton of daylight or bright LED lighting and pot lights, it'll start to seem quite cool, almost like a stainless steel type of gray. In other situations, it can feel a bit earthy and closer to a stone gray, or even the colors you might find in early thunderstorm clouds. In fact, I found this neat little color palette by Rug Design that does a good job at visually explaining passive in comparison to other darker taupey grays. That's the color you can expect with passive. It's passive in the sense that it's not an accent color by any means, but that doesn't make it any easier to simply input it into any room seamlessly. So with that said, where should you use it? Passive is one of your transitional chameleon grays that can incorporate itself into a variety of different layouts. I will say though, it has that thunderstormy quality that can feel a bit moody at times, but that allows it to have an impact visually. I would not call it a solid main color candidate, and that's simply because of its level of depth and its tricky undertones that could cement itself perfectly in some situations, but then clash in others. I find it works best in bathrooms that have a lot of surrounding tile, essentially any rooms where there isn't a ton of wall space, so you want a color that has some substance to it. I would say it's also dark enough to be a pretty decent kitchen island color to accompany much lighter cabinets. Sometimes these mid-tone grays do a great job at that subtle pop of color in an otherwise simplistic grayscale color palette. What's a good trim color for it? This is a slightly tricky one because the undertones in your trim will subconsciously affect your perception of the undertones in your wall color. I find that when you use warmer trim color, you'll sort of neutralize the warmth in your wall color. The same thing happens the opposite way. If you go with an icier white on your baseboards, then the warmer aspect of passive will be slightly more prominent. That being said, I would steer you towards pure white for your trim because it has that hint of warmth, but enough gray to prevent it from feeling yellowy or creamy in the slightest. It's just that right balance to my eyes. What are some interesting color pairings for it? Well, based on passive somewhat stormy theme, I'd like to introduce Evergreen Fog as a potential pairing, which it too has that somewhat ominous intrigue to it, but it introduces much more green while still keeping it dusty with its gray aspect. If you wanna move away from the greens and go a little closer towards the mauve, earthy red side of things, then you can also check out White Truffle as an interesting color pairing. This is a color that we first talked about in a previous color combos episode, and I'll be sure to leave it in the cards up top. Last time we paired White Truffle with a gold color, but as you can see here, it also looks pretty good with a more traditional gray in passive. In both cases, whichever color you introduce as that complementary color pairing, they will tend to be the color you'll see less of in passive. So just be aware of that interaction. 
Can you compare it to other colors? If we're keeping it within Sherwin-Williams, then I'll start with Touch of Grey. Touch of Grey looks like passive, but it has a touch more beige. So it will end up slotting itself into the grey beige colors even more so. This could prove to be beneficial if you're concerned about any green cast in your wall colors, or you just happen to have more warmer browns and taupes in your decor that you'd like to coordinate with. There is a Benjamin Moore color that is extremely similar to passive, both in its LRV and the overall look it provides. Stone Inked in Grey is not a carbon copy of Passive, but they're both in that category where they walk the line of icy, but still earthy. Stone Inked in Grey, however, is a little bit more towards the icy side of things and is more susceptible to appear green and blue with direct sunlight. But its benefit is you kind of know that going into it, which means you can plan for its undertones a bit easier. We did a video on Stone Inked in Grey, which you can watch and learn all about it in greater detail right over here. If you've made it this far, I assume that means you liked it. So it would help us a ton if you hit that like button and share this with your friends as we continue to provide the color content you crave. See you on the next one.